Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to part two of Global Accessibility Awareness Day here at the UW. Um, obviously, it's a global event, and so there are things happening all over the world on this day, as there have been for the last 11 years, I think. Um, and here at the UW, we've been doing this for many years, um, uh, just commemorating this day with, uh, with a variety of trainings and workshops and other activities all centered around raising awareness um, and building capacity around digital accessibility. And so uh, some of you uh, were here for the, the morning session where we kind of did a deeper dive than usual into uh, how screen readers operate. And we also looked at a number of different tools that, that can be used for checking accessibility. And uh, this afternoon, we're gonna focus a little bit more on document accessibility um, and kicking things off with uh, specifically looking at alt text um, and how to write good alt text, which is uh, a question that we get uh, quite frequently, actually. Um, so I just wanted to share, I've just got this one slide and just wanted to share uh, a couple of, of links. Uh, first off, um, this is again, a global event, um, but the official Global Accessibility Awareness Day website is accessibility.day. And I encourage you to check that out. There's a lot of uh, really good information, great resources on that website. Um, and also I encourage you to check out our freshly redesigned UW Accessible Technology website at uw.edu slash accessibility. This is the site that we use to communicate all sorts of things related to web accessibility and document accessibility and, and videos and online meetings and online courses and lots of information there about digital accessibility. Um, that's kind of our hub for communicating to the University of Washington community um, and a lot of good resources out there for people who are outside of the UW as well. So uh, we just launched the, uh, the new redesign, which has been in the works for, for many months now. A lot of input from, from many of you, and we really appreciate that input. And hopefully we provided a, a site that's easy to navigate, easy to find the kind of content that you're looking for. Um, also, there is on that site a schedule of today's events. Uh, you obviously are here, and so you probably know what why you're here. Um, but we're halfway through the day. We've got uh, two more hours of really great information. And I'm going to stop talking and, and hand off to Gaby and Anna Marie to um, plunge into to that content. So take it away. All right, I'm going to share my screen here. Move some windows around. All right, so you should be seeing my title slide. So Anna Marie, go ahead and take it away and I'll pick up where you leave off. All right, good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to the art of writing alt text. I'm Anna Marie Golden, an IT accessibility specialist with the IT accessibility team, a part of UWIT's accessible technology services. Next slide. Alternative text. What is it? Why use it? Alternative text or alt text is an attribute of the HTML image tag. It provides a brief description of an image placed on a website for those who cannot see it. Someone may not be able to see an image for various reasons. Maybe they are blind and cannot see images. Maybe they have image loading turned off for faster page load times because they have poor internet service or maybe the image link just gets broken. So what if you went to a web page and you couldn't see images that contain information that you need to know? So for example, what if your child in ingested poison? And when you went to the website to get help, there was just this Mr. Yuck image on the right side of the slide that contains the poison hotline phone number. If you can't see it, how would you know how to get help? Assistive technologies such as screen readers announce images. If you couldn't see an image, how would you understand why it's there? So what about the second image example on the right side of the slide? The 404 error lets website visitors know the link to the web page is either broken 
or the page doesn't exist on the server. So if you landed on this page and you couldn't see the image, how would you know what happened with your browsing experience? So if you knew there was an image on the page, but you couldn't see it, would you wonder about it? And if an image is placed on a web page for the whole world to see, should you really have to ask someone else to describe it? So now that you know a little bit about why alt text is important, let's have some fun and do some practice. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a few image examples on upcoming slides. And these are images from actual slide decks that were used in college courses here at the University of Washington. So for each example, we'll take two minutes to let folks take a stab at writing alt text in the chat. Just write what you think the alt text should be. There's no right or wrong here today and there's no judgment. This is just to get you started thinking about how you would do it. Okay, next slide. So the first example here is an image that includes Spike Lee and it was used in a college film class slide deck. So how would you describe this image in alt text? So go ahead, try it out in chat, and then I'll read a few as we go. So go ahead and start now. Okay, we have some coming in. Director Spike Lee holds a street sign for do the right thing way. Image of Spike Lee holding a street sign with the name of his film, do the right thing. Spike Lee standing in the middle of a residential street holding a street sign that says, do the right thing way. Picture of Spike Lee standing on a city street holding hold a street sign that reads, do the right thing way. Image of Spike Lee standing in a street, holding a street sign that reads, do the right thing way. So we have a lot of like-minded thinkers here today. Image of Spike Lee standing in a street, holding a street sign which says, do the right thing way. We'll just take a few more seconds here. Go ahead and enter if you haven't hit enter yet. Spike Lee, African American director holding up a green street sign that reads, do the right thing. Spike Lee standing on a street full of parked cars holding a banner that reads, do the right thing way. Wow, you guys are great at this already. Would you like to see what the actual alt text that was used is? Next slide, next slide, please. And the actual alt text that was used for this image is Spike Lee standing in the street, holding a street sign that reads, do the right thing way. Great, okay, next slide. In the second image example, we have a diagram of a Francis turbine that was used in a college mechanical engineering class. How would you describe this image in alt text? We'll take two minutes to allow folks to enter their alt text in the chat, and I'll read a few as we go. So go ahead and start entering your alt text for this one in the chat. This one's a little trickier than the first one, huh? Go ahead, take a stab at it. There's no judgment here today. Okay. 
diagram of Francis turbine with parts labeled parts include in clockwise order main shaft operating ring water guiding device spiral case guide vane stay ring <laughs> and it just went out of view um runner draft tube guide vane head cover water inlet arrows indicate direction of movement okay illustration of Francis turbine diagram with components cone excuse me, components pointed out. Digital 3D rendering of a Francis turbine with parts labeled. Image of diagram of the labeled components of a Francis turbine. I think this would require a separate descriptive text page. Yeah, that's possible. Cross section of Francis turbine diagram showing clockwise flow through the guide vane and downward flow in runner. Three dimensional diagram of a turbine with each component labeled. Arrows show direction the machinery turns. And I'll read one more here. Technical diagram of Francis turbine labeling different parts. See text for specific parts. Oh, nice. Okay. Francis turbine diagram with parts label. Okay. Good job. I, uh, Anna Marie, I just wanted to point out, I, I like the one that says see text for more information. So with something like this, this is a pretty complex diagram and context is really helpful um, when writing alt text for these kinds of things. Um, so hopefully there's a more um, robust um, explanation of what a Francis turbine is within the context that this image was taken out of. So um, I, I think that's a, a great way to um, incorporate uh, the context within the alt text as well. So just wanted to, to point that out. Okay, next slide, please. And the actual alt text that was used is, a graphic figure of the Francis turbine structure. It consists of various parts like spiral case, head cover, water inlet, main shaft, operating ring, water guiding device, guide vane, runner, draft tube, and stay ring. So I just want to point out that this engineering diagram is a good example of why sometimes it might be necessary to enlist the help of a subject matter expert in writing alt text to ensure we are conveying the correct details to website visitors to make sure we're getting that correct purpose of that image out there. Next slide, please. So what about this one? How would you describe this image that was used in a college film class PowerPoint? Let the artist in you come alive as you enter your alt text for this one in chat. And we'll take two minutes to allow you to do that. Okay, up close image of a clock and microphone held close to someone's mouth. Nice. Close up of hand and mouth with stopwatch and microphone. Okay. Close up of an alarm clock showing eight o'clock, a microphone and mustached lips. Okay, that's good. Close up of a black male with mustache holding an alarm clock set to 8 a.m. and a microphone at his mouth. Very nice. Partial image of a man's face who is holding a clock set to 8 o'clock and the top of a microphone. Close up of an image of a man's lips against a microphone while he holds an alarm clock reading 8 o'clock.
close-up image of a man's lips against a microphone while he holds an alarm clock reading eight o'clock. Close up a photograph of pocket watch reflecting eight o'clock and a microphone held up to male's lips. Nice. Okay, we got time for one more if you're getting ready to hit that enter. All right, image of someone holding a small alarm clock set at eight o'clock and microphone close to their mouth. The image has a warm tint. Oh, nice. Okay. And the actual alt text used for this image was, next slide, please. A man holds a tiny clock near his lips and positions himself in front of the mic. Okay. Next slide, please. Our last example today is another image that was used in an actual college film class slide deck. It contains a scene taken from the movie three times. How would you describe it? We'll take another couple of minutes to allow you to type your alt text in the chat. Okay, we have two men in 70. Oops, sorry. Five adults stand and sit around a pool table with one in position to take their turn. Nice. Man leans over the corner of a pool table intent on the shot he plans to take. His opponent, two men and a woman observe. Five people surround a pool table. Three observe the game. One person awaits their turn and the fourth sets up the shot. Nice. Image from movie three times showing two men playing pool while three adults view the game. A still from the movie three times, a man is bent over a pool table while several onlookers watch him set up his shot. Nice. Five people around a pool table from left to right, two people sitting, one standing holding a pool stick, one standing observing, one bent over a table taking a shot with a pool stick. Okay. A man bends over a pool table with a cue in his hand while four others watch. There are three balls on the table. Nice. Two men playing pool, one standing in the background holding cue and one leaning over taking aim. One woman standing and two sitting observing. All appear to be Asian and 20 something. Okay. So the actual alt text that was used for this image is, next slide. A screenshot from the movie three times shows two members playing pool. A man bends down to aim while the other man is standing. So you see that writing alt text is really kind of more of an art than it is a science. And just like from the various descriptions that folks um, entered into the chat today for the different examples shows you how subjective it could be sometimes. And so especially like, you know, if, if you're doing some kind of complex image like the turbine diagram that we saw before, um, it's definitely a good idea to consult subject matter experts or go back to the person who created um, the message to make sure you understand what the true purpose of an image is. Okay, turn it over to Gaby. All right, thanks, Anna Marie. That was awesome. 
Um, so for the rest of the hour, I'm going to talk about um, alt text for charts, graphs, and smart art, um, and then we'll also experience what it's like for when a screen reader um, encounters these kinds of, of charts, graphs, and smart art, art and, and how it announces those. Um, and I kind of wanted to set this up. Um, so back in uh, February, earlier in February this year, we uh, performed screen reader tests with a PowerPoint um, presentation because we wanted to experience what it's like for a screen reader user to consume a PowerPoint presentation that is pretty much purely um, a visual medium for displaying or for uh, presenting information. So we wanted to have a better understanding of, of what somebody who's consuming that information, what they experience. And uh, we, uh, we, had a, we created a PowerPoint presentation with a bunch of different elements in it. And we were testing those different elements. And then we recorded everything in a Google spreadsheet. And what you're looking at on this uh, slide is a snippet from that Google spreadsheet where we were uh, testing specifically um, what uh, a chart, how a chart is announced or presented by screen readers um, in a PowerPoint presentation. So we had two versions of the same chart one without any alt text and then one with alt text. And uh, I'm gonna summarize the findings uh, based on uh, what we're seeing here on this slide. So um, for the chart that did not have any alt text, NVDA does not read anything. Um, I think it might just announce content placeholder, but it doesn't really announce anything else. JAWS um, announces the details of the chart and it groups things by series, such as each fruit in order, and then by point, uh, the characteristics. And we'll take a look at the chart a little bit later on here. Um, and then for each point, it announces the value. So it really goes into depth as to, um, you know, announcing each one of the different um, elements of that chart. Um, similar thing for narrator. Narrator announced the chart as, uh, quote, chart three, clustered column, unquote. After the chart, each one of the 51 individual items that comprise the chart is announced as, quote, chart clustered column, unquote, and is part of the focus order. And there's a clear visible focus for each component as it's read. Um, for voiceover, voiceover announces the chart as, quote, chart clustered column, end quote. And if the user drills down into the uh, chart using the voiceover keys, the shift key and the arrow keys, then they can access the 51 individual items that comprise the chart. The chart. Uh, but it's all just a bunch of data noise. So then we compared that exact same chart, but uh, this one had alt text. And uh, this is what we found. For NVDA, NVDA announces the alt text, but it does not expose the chart itself. Um, JAWS announces the alt text uh, and does not expose the chart either. Um, narrator reads the alt text on the chart and it does not expose the chart. And then for some reason, voiceover reads the alt text twice. So based on our um, experiments, our recommendation for uh, including charts and graphs in PowerPoint is to always include alt text to make those charts and graphs um, more accessible. Um, if not, either if you don't cite alt text to it, then the screen reader will not um, read the contents at all, as in the case of NVDA, or it will read all of the very different elements within the chart, the different um, um, uh, uh, data points and variables, and even uh, we'll start describing some of the shapes within the chart. So, um, so what we wanted to do is we wanted to see if we could replicate this in Word. Um, and so we did the same experiment with the same chart uh, two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, so last Monday, because we wanted to see uh, if we were going to experience the same thing. So there's something to keep in mind. Um, JAWS has been updated since February, and so when I was initially running uh, these kinds of experiments, I was not getting the behavior that I was hoping to get. So we asked our, our uh, screen reader ex expert, Hadi Rangan, if he could perform these uh, tests and, and see what he got. And um, he was getting similar things that I, I was getting as well. So, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, play for you um, and, uh, a recording of, in this case, this is JAWS, announcing this chart um, that you see on screen, it's a bar chart. 
Um, and uh, this chart does not have any alt text. So let me explain to you what you're going to see before we, we actually run this. So um, it's going to read the heading level, um, and then it's going to read the text, and then I'm going to arrow down into the chart. The chart's going to become the main focus. It'll change color, and then you're going to hear what, uh, how the uh, screen reader announces um, this particular chart without any alt text. Okay. Heading level three bar chart. This example does not include any old text and includes the same data as the following line. Graph. Chart area. Chart title. Fruits. Legend. Series. Quote. Apples. Quote. Legend. Entry. Series. Quote. Oranges. Quote. Legend. Entry. Series. Quote. Bananas. Quote. Legend. Entry. Plot area. Vertical. Left parent value. Right parent axis. Axis label value. Colon. Zero. Axis label value. Colon. One. Axis label value. Colon. Two. Axis label value. Colon. Three. <laughs> axis label value. Colon. Four. Axis label value. Colon. Five. Axis. Label value colon six horizontal left parent category right parent axis axis label category colon ripeness axis label category colon fragrance axis label category colon appearance axis label category colon cost vertical left parent value right parent axis major grid lines series quote apples quote series quote apples quote point quote ripeness quote value colon four point three series quote apples quote point quote fragrance quote value colon two point five series quote Apples quote point quote appearance quote value colon 3.5 series quote apples quote point quote cost quote value colon 4.5 series quote oranges quote series quote oranges quote point quote ripeness quote value colon 2.4 series quote oranges quote point quote fragrance quote value colon 4.4 series quote oranges quote point quote appearance quote value colon 1.8 series quote oranges quote point quote cost quote value colon 2.8 series quote bananas quote series quote bananas quote point Point, quote ripeness quote value colon two series quote bananas quote point quote fragrance quote value colon two series quote bananas quote point quote appearance quote value colon three series quote bananas quote point quote cost quote value colon five chart element layout options left parent text wrapping and positioning right parent available add element available styles available data layout available chart area okay so that was about I think it's like a two and a half minute audio video of uh, the screen reader reading that chart. And what you're experiencing is, um, is it's reading all of the, the data that is com composed in there. And it's reading it as one big chunk. And the challenge for screen reader users is there's no way for them to stop that announcement and then uh, go back and forward within that announcement to figure out the individual data points. It's just all presented in one big chunk. It's, it's something like uh, 1,496 characters. Um, now, if um, an individual is using a Braille device, then they could um, go back and um, kind of, you know, uh, read different parts of that entire description. But keep in mind that a very small percentage of, of people who use screen readers also use Braille as well. Um, so this makes it really, really confusing. All of the data points are there, but if you're trying to follow it, it makes it really, really challenging to understand the relationship between the fruits and the values. So Again, so we talk about, you know, um, including alt text for charts, and it's absolutely critical because it's really difficult to synthesize all of that information in one fell swoop. An individual might have to listen to it several times to get the data that they're looking for. Heading level Oops. three bar. Did not mean to do that. Okay. So, um, so how would you write actual art, alt text for this particular chart? So on this slide, we actually have the chart itself on the left-hand side and left-hand side of the slide, um, and it's all about fruits and ripeness and uh, apples and oranges and whatnot. Uh, but when you create a chart by going up to the insert tab and then selecting chart, um, what happens is Excel automatically opens and you get um, this uh, little representation here of, um, I've, I've got a, a, a screenshot of it, Excel will open, and then you enter in your values and that populates your chart. Um, and essentially, um, in this case, um, a, uh, a data table 
would probably be a lot more um, accessible than you know reading all of those data points by having um, that chart in there. But the charts make it very visually appealing uh, for many folks, and so that's why you know people choose to use charts instead of data tables to represent data. Um, I'm going to switch here to my web browser to a couple of different references that um, I'm going to give you guys at the end of this. Um, let's see if I can make this better. better. Oops. Okay, so this is, let me see if I can put this in the chat as well. This is a, a resource um, that um, we use for describing figures, and this is from Special Interest Group on Accessible Computing. And it gives a little bit of information about general guidelines for uh, writing alt text for charts and graphs. So it's pretty uh, helpful and, inform and informative. Um, but one thing that you'll notice if you're going through this information um, is that it, it tells you in order to give more information about the, the graph or the bar chart to include supplemental figures such as uh, data tables and whatnot. But the problem is in Word documents, when you're entering in your alt text, there's no way to include a data table within your alt text. Um, so, so that's kind of uh, challenging when you're working with complex uh, graphics. Um, so, um, I'm going to go back here to my presentation. Oops. 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 Get there. So uh, the other tip that those websites um, uh, tell you to do is to make sure that you include uh, all of the different value points that are included within your chart. And if there are any trends that are going upwards or downwards, or essentially what is the point of the particular chart or graph that you've included within your document or um, you know whatever uh, content that you have. So what we've come up with uh, for the alt text for this particular chart would be um, here on this slide and it says, Bar chart, value for ripeness, apples, 4.3, oranges, 2.4, bananas, 2. Value for fragrance, apples, 2.5, oranges, 4.4, bananas, 2. Value for appearance, apples, 3.5, oranges, 1.8, bananas, 3. Value for cost, apples, 4.5, oranges, 2.8, and bananas, 5. So that's a lot more meaningful than what we just heard and concatenates um, all of the, the information that is included in this chart. Okay. Okay. So uh, we also have had questions about smart art and how do screen readers um, handle smart art? So we did a similar experiment with smart art. And in this case, um, you know, we went to the same location, go to in the insert uh, drop down menu. And from there you choose smart art and then you can choose whatever option you want to. In this case, we decided to choose uh, three lists in, in different um, uh, columns. So again, this smart art does not have any alt text associated with it. And this is how JAWS would read this in Word. This example heading level three list. This example does not include any alt text. Horizontal bullet list, rectangle, 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 smart art diagram, layout options, left parent, X wrapping and positioning, right parent available, horizontal bullet list graphic, horizontal bullet list, rectangle, 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 smart art diagram. Okay. So it didn't read any of the text. It just read the elements of the, the lists themselves that happened to be in this kind of smart art. So it was uh, describing the, the rectangles, but completely missed the text itself. So that's why it is critically important to have alt text associated not only with charts, but also with smart art, um, as it seems that screen readers don't really access um, access the, the text in that case. Um, and I, I kind of want to go back to um, the original um, chart that we were looking at earlier. We go back here. Um, now, 
we also, I also tried to do an experiment with the updated version of JAWS. Remember we did a test back in February and then uh, we did a test a couple of weeks ago. And I was trying to get the alt text to be read uh, within the chart in Word for Windows, but I was having a really difficult time. And I thought, well, maybe my skills in JAWS aren't that great. And so that's why we had Hottie kind of um, uh, get involved with, uh, with this experiment as well. But Hottie was having a hard time getting the alt text to read for charts and word as well. But we think that's a bug. And I'll tell you the reason why um, is because um, when we tested JAWS in um, PowerPoint again, we were noticing that the reading order is completely, well, JAWS is essentially ignoring the reading order in PowerPoint. So, uh, so we think that, so there's two bugs that are going on with JAWS there. And then when we tested this chart again in Word using NVDA, um, we noticed that it had the same behavior as what we noticed when testing it in PowerPoint. So um, NVDA, if it encountered this chart without any alt text, it would just announce content placeholder um, or it wouldn't announce anything at all. But if it did have alt text, it would actually announce the alt text and not any of the individual components. I also tested this chart with voiceover last night um, in Word as well. And if you remember from our PowerPoint test, um, without alt text, uh, voiceover will allow the user to drill down within the chart and read each one of the individual components. But if a chart did have alt text, it will read the alt text twice. But when I tested it in Word, uh, um, uh, last night, voiceover would only read the, uh, the alt text once. So um, we're thinking, I'm thinking that um, Apple made that adjustment and fixed that bug. So what we're seeing is we're seeing the behaviors that we should be seeing in other screen readers, such as NVDA and voiceover, which is they should announce the alt text. Um, but there seems to be a bug within JAWS. Now, that doesn't change our recommendations. We still re recommend that uh, folks um, include alt text for graphics and charts uh, regardless. Um, and then um, when we do these kinds of experiments, then we file bug reports. So um, that's just a, another bug report that we need to file with JAWS um, to make sure that, that, uh, it, it, that the screen reader should be behaving um, the way that um, we anticipate. Um, so let me go back. To, so this is our, uh, again, our um, uh, smart art. And then I wanted to include what the, um, the uh, alt text would be for this particular um, smart art list. So this would be three lists. The first list is about apples. They are red or yellow and crisp. The second list is about oranges. They are orange and citrus. And the third list is about bananas. They are yellow and sweet. Um, so that's just really simple um, alt text for this particular small, smart art diagram. Um, I wanted to also give you guys an example of, um, of what uh, uh, alt text sounds like when screen reader announces it accurately. So in this particular case, we did assign alt text to this um, particular design. This is a cycle matrix um, that um, uh, uh, includes um, some alt text. So again, I'm going to play this video and what you're going to experience is that um, the screen reader will announce the heading level first and then the sentence, excuse me, and then it will, uh, I'll change the focus to uh, enter into the, the smart art itself. And then uh, the screen reader will read the alt text for that particular diagram. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. <laughs> Heading level three cycle matrix. This example does include alt text for the entire diagram, but not for the individual elements. Tuckman's four stages of group development contained in the cycle matrix. Forming a stage one, storming stage two, norming stage three, and performing stage four. Partial circle, rectangle, colon, rounded corners. 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 Arrow, colon, circular. Arrow, colon, circular. Okay. 
So it two. did read uh, the alt text, which in this case is Tuckman's four stages of group development contained in the cycle matrix, forming a stage one, storming a stage two, norming a stage three, and performing a stage four. But then it also announced some of, uh, it started to describe some of the, the shapes that are contained within the smart art. And that seems to be unique to JAWS. Um, NVDA does not seem to do that. It just reads the alt text and voiceover doesn't seem to do that at all. Um, so what we recommend, if at all possible, um, not only including alt text for your charts and your graphs, but if at all possible, um, artifacting the particular decorative elements within that chart itself. Now, um, there's a couple of different ways to add alt text or to uh, mark certain things as decorative. Um, and when you're in a chart or a graph, um, well, usually what you can do is you can right click on an, on an item and that brings up a context menu. And within that context menu, there should be an, uh, an, an item listed in there for edit alt text. But that doesn't seem to be the case when we're talking about smart art or charts. Um, the only way to mark things decorative is to select that decorative element um, and then go up to the review tab and then select um, check accessibility from there. And then from the check accessibility drop down list will be an option for um, editing alt text. So you have to go through the menu, um, the actual ribbon in order to get to the alt text menu for marking those, those um, uh, decorative elements as decorative. It's an additional step, um, and uh, but it seems to be necessary, uh, especially for those folks who are using JAWS as their primary screen reader. Okay, so Anna Marie, I'm going to hand it back to you uh, because you have some more uh, tips for writing alt text for us. Yeah, well, we didn't want to get you started without leaving you without some general tips for writing alt text. Um, so we want to make sure that all images that convey meaning have alt text. And think about when you convey the image's purpose. I, I mean, think about a linked image versus a regular image, how the purpose of those might be different. Um, limit alt text to around 140 characters or less. This is a recommendation because a couple different reasons. One has to do with the way that assistive technologies chunk up the data and relay that to users. Um, so it'll, it'll give like a stream of characters and then there'll be this really long pause. And so sometimes users don't know that there's gonna be more information after that. But even more important than that is the way that users have the ability to review alt text. So with regular text on the page, assistive technology users can review that information like character by character or word by word. And with alt text, you can't do that. You, it's just kind of a top-down thing. It starts and that's it. Um, you can't review it. So it's a good idea to keep it short because you want people to be able to remember what they're doing there. You don't want to have like this really huge cognitive load for them to understand your image. It's not necessary to say photo of in your alt text because assistive technologies are going to announce that it's a graphic when they hit a graphic. Um, and, and it's important to omit information that's not available to all users. So for example, if I'm adding information in my alt text that's not there visually on the page, only people who access alt text are gonna get that information. And with decorative images on web pages, make sure you're using that null alt text, alt equals quote, quote for your alt attribute. And with documents, use the checkbox for decorative images. So when you do these things, what that does is it allows assistive technologies to ignore those images. So they're not going to get pinged that there's an image on the page and wonder, what was that image about? And as Gaby was just talking about, always assign alt text to an entire chart, graph, or smart art. And then mark individual components as decorative. Katie? You're muted. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Anne-Marie. 
All right, I wanted to share a resource page and share a, a link again with you with the special interest group on accessible computing. But there's another link I also wanted to share. It's uh, effective practices for description of science content within uh, digital talking books. Um, let's see here if I can get to that. Let's see here. Okay, so this is the SIG access link, and this is um, this is effective practices for description of science content, and this is from WGBH NCAM, um, and uh, this has a lot of great contents in here for um, creating alt text um, for digital talking books, but this also um, applies to documents and websites as well. So it gives a lot of different, very concrete examples for things like bar charts, line graphs, Venn diagrams, scatter plots, tables, and pie charts, and so forth and so on. So another great reset, uh, resource to draw from on the, there as well. Um, and with that, I um, wanted to share this last slide that says for a free consultation for websites, you can contact uh, Anna Marie at amgolden at uw.edu. And for our consultation for electronic, accessible electronic documents, you can contact me at gabyd at uw.edu. Um, but I, we have just a few more minutes left, and I wanted to, um, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing here. I wanted to address some of the questions um, that we had in the chat. I think some of them were addressed already, but we can take a look at a couple of them that were not. Let's see here. Uh, let's see, for some of the complicated charts, would it work to provide a title or something brief? and refer to text within the document via caption or body of the document. Yeah, so when usually when people include charts and graphs within their document, um, there is context for that. And that context should be included in your body copy um, as to why you're including that chart or graph um, in your document or whatever. And so that really should uh, probably have more information or describe that chart or figure um, a little bit more uh, robustly than what could be explained in, in alt text. Um, so context is, is huge in that regard. Uh, so that's a great question. Um, and then one other question, does anyone have experience with converting smart art to shapes? I've read that doing that then allows screen readers to go through the bullets regularly, but I haven't tested it. Uh, you know, we haven't tested that either. So um, maybe one of our during one of our next um, uh, staff meetings, we will uh, try that out, convert that smart uh, art to shapes, and see if we can actually get the, the text to 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 be announced by the screen reader. Seems like an additional step um, uh, for that to happen, and and not quite sure you know what the results would be for that. So that's uh, uh, something that we would like to test out in the future um, and then uh, you know watch the space as we continue to do those kinds of experiments and um, we can relay to you what the uh, the outcomes are for that. Um, let's see here. There's another question about the number of characters and it looks like Terrell has that, answered that, but uh, Elizabeth asks, I've been told there are character limits in the alt text. Should you be worried about hitting those limits when trying to include the uh, chart information? And Terrell says, there's no hard character limit for art, alt text. Screen readers will keep reading. However, they can't read alt text like they can read other text. There's no exploring the text. It just reads it as uh, a chunk. Um, so it's best to keep it short and sweet. Okay, and then Sarah has a question. Curious, does that mean we shouldn't have said Spike Lee on that Spike Lee image since his name isn't anywhere on the image? It's possible his name is somewhere else on the slide. Um, I, I'm assuming that's referring to um, the earlier uh, image that uh, Anna Marie showed. Um, you know, if 
it's possible to include individuals' names. I, I don't think that that's um, something that needs to be omitted. Um, if you know, if you're, it, and again, it, it kind of depends on context as well. Um, so that was that image was specifically taken from a film class. Um, so you probably do want to mention Spike Lee as he is the director, and maybe you want to mention the fact that you know, he is the director or filmmaker. Um, so uh, again, it really depends on the, the context of how those images or charts or graphs are presented um, in, in your document or, um, or anything else. Okay, um, we are at 2.52. So I think we're gonna go ahead and end for this session. And we'll start up again at three o'clock for uh, accessible tables in Word and PDF.